climate change. We've all heard it. Many of us have probably even heard the statistics that temperatures may increase by as much as four or five degrees over the next hundred years. Sometimes in the midst of these conversations, though, we forget what that means for us. What's going to happen in our own backyards to the plants, animals, and microbes around us? The focus of my thesis is to look at lake microbial communities and how they respond to climate change. More specifically, I look at Antarctic algae. Algae are responsible for over 60% of all photosynthesis on our planet, meaning that they're very responsible for our oxygen levels. So you may be asking yourself, well, why Antarctica if I'm interested in the lakes around here? It's because Antarctica is the perfect test tube. They don't have any plants, animals, or humans to interact, which makes them a completely microbial world. Also, because of their extreme conditions, they're much more sensitive to small changes in temperature and weather. So by understanding what's going to happen there, we can better predict what's going to happen in temperate lakes like Erie or Acton. Two things happen in Antarctica when temperatures increase. The first thing we see is that the ice coverage actually decreases, allowing more light to penetrate to the organisms living beneath. The second thing we see is that glaciers melt. And when glaciers melt, we get increased nutrients, specifically nitrogen and phosphorus, being input into these lakes. This increased amount of nutrients and light not only changes the chemistry of the lake, but also the organisms living there. So I've conducted two experiments. The first was to increase the amount of light that an organism community can receive, and the second was to increase nutrients. I looked at growth, photochemistry, and how the community changed over time. The results were a bit surprising. What we saw was that when light was increased, organisms were able to grow more readily, but they were actually less efficient at their photosynthesis, just meaning that they couldn't convert carbon dioxide to oxygen as readily as they could when they were under lower light levels. In the second experiment, when we increased nutrient concentrations, what we saw was a shift in the community. What started out as a highly photosynthetic community, meaning that they were converting sunlight to energy and CO2 to oxygen, Instead, by the end of the experiment, the organisms were heterotrophic, just meaning that they were eating other organisms as opposed to using sunlight. And these organisms are not capable of converting carbon dioxide to oxygen. So what does this mean for us? Well, as temperatures continue to increase, it's likely that we're going to see an increased frequency of algal blooms. Although we'll have more algae, photosynthesis is actually going to be less efficient. This is not only going to affect our weekend activities, but could also affect our food supply. And because the organisms may become more heterotrophic, we could eventually see decreases in the global oxygen levels. And that's why I'm here. I want to continue this research to look more into what the implications of these changes could be and how we can better prepare for them in the future. Thank you.